because we're in the fall now. I just wanted to say a few words because there's been so much bad news on TV and in the newspapers of people being killed, shot, bombs. And uh, just to remind, because every once in a while we need to be reminded that um, the first thing we think about is hating these people and being filled with anger and wishing, sometimes wishing they were dead. But that's not what we should be sending out because the, the thoughts are real. We send out hate. They're real. They go around. You get it back twice as much, ten times as much. And uh, what we're about here is sending out love and healing. And these people that do these acts, even bullies, um, it's been passed down. It's been taught through generations. And even with bullies, um, you hear about the person committing suicide because they can't handle the bullying. But you have to realize that the bullies have less confidence in them than you do. So send love, send out love even to the ones that are doing the bombing. And it'll, it'll go around and you'll get it back. And that's what we're about is sending love because God knows they need it. They obviously don't have it. So let's send them our love and hope that eventually they get it and uh, we will have peace hopefully in this generation but hopefully soon we can have peace by sending out love. Lots of love. And that's what I want to say. So I'm going to call up Linda. <laughs> that was short. <laughs> that was short. <laughs> coming up in November and it is a ghost busting workshop and it's being held by uh, Durham Rescue Mediums of which I'm one of. We also have uh, Nicole Brake and we also have Allison Lurs Peacock so we're kind of a three-man team and we've been doing this for about I don't know I don't remember probably about four or five years now so we get the odd call from people that need help um, I thought I would get up here today, first of all, to remind you that the workshop's coming up, though you'll hear it when we go through the announcements. But I thought I'd give a little bit of a, a talk on, um, not necessarily what we do, but, well, I might talk a little bit about that, but have a little bit of a conversation with you, so I want this to be interactive, okay? I want you to ask me questions, and you probably have the same questions that other people might have, okay, with regards to spirit and ghosts and that type of thing. Um, the difference between spirit and ghost. Ghosts are trapped. They are someone that has passed on but hasn't gone through to the light. So they're stuck in this gray zone. And when I say it's a gray zone, it really truly is a gray zone. And I'm going to talk about these people that are stuck for, for a minute because there's a variety of reasons as to why they are. Um, typically, if someone has passed away from something very traumatic, very traumatic, um, they are typically out of their body so quick they don't even understand or recognize that they've actually passed away. So they don't know that they're actually dead. And then we have those spirit that um, someone that has passed away that might have had, for example, some sort of an addiction or mental illness. And they don't necessarily have the wherewithal when they pass that they've gone. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that because you have an addiction that you don't pass. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a small percentage of folks that pass on that might have um, died because that maybe they had an overdose or that type of thing. So all of that stuff is still in their body. So they're not in their right mind, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay? But most people do. All right. The majority of us go right away. 
happily singing, dancing, and off we go. It's only a very small percent. Um, there are also individuals, for example, want to take a look at the elderly that um, might have, say, Alzheimer's, that type of thing. They might not go right away, but they will eventually go once, once their mind starts clearing and they recognize and understand where they're at. And then there's those that don't go because they're revengeful, they're resentful, they're angry, they don't want to leave their stuff, they don't want to leave their family. There's a lot of reasons why people choose not to go. They don't want to let go of the property or the land that they're on or the house that they're in, etc., etc. They have some sort of attachment to, to the planet and they choose not to go. Um, in a lot of cases, these are the, the typical sort of ghosts that we come across. And uh, there's a lot of fear when we go to people's homes and they're having problems. There's a lot of fear with regards to some of the things that they could be experiencing. And when you, you just, I guess you have to think about it from this perspective is that if someone that was living on the planet in their earthly form was a real miserable, cranky, um, rotten person, when they cross and they don't go into the light and they're in that gray space, okay, they keep that personality of what they were on the earth plane when they cross over. So they end up being just as cranky and just as miserable and just as rotten as they were in their real life, okay? The only difference is, is that, you know, people normally can't see them, and their only way of communicating is by slamming doors, stomping their feet, making noises, um, you know, um, turning the television off, turning the on and off the lights, fans, whatever they choose to, depending on their own individual strength and the energy that they have, <coughs> is really, is really how it works, right? So the, the stronger the energy they are, the more ability they have to do things in your home, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a little story. We were actually, I was actually up at the cottage and I've been there for, I don't know, probably 11 years now. <clears throat> and I had um, my sister Carol, my sister Allison, and my girl, uh, Carol's girlfriend, Mary Ann. And it was a beautiful day, so we'd set up, we always like to play cards. So we'd set up a card table out in front of, um, on the deck actually. So we all took our wine or whatever, we went outside, and the four of us were sitting around the table and we were playing cards. And of course, I never see anything. It's always, <laughs> it's always somebody else. No, it's not that I never see anything, it's that I didn't see anything in this particular occasion. But my sister was sitting in, in the driveway, it goes up like this, so she was facing the driveway and she saw a man cross over the driveway. And she said, I just saw a man cross over the driveway. We all looked, didn't see anybody there. So we continued playing our cards. So she was facing up the driveway and her girlfriend was sitting, across, I was sitting here, and her girlfriend was sitting across from there and then Allie's here, right? So of course she didn't see anything either because her back's to the driveway. I didn't see anything because I couldn't quite see the whole driveway, so these two people saw. And then Marion's like, I just saw the guy walk across. And I said, well, he's wearing a baseball hat and a white t-shirt, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's what he's wearing. So <laughs> Allison and I went up the driveway. Thought, let's go see if we can communicate with this person. Well, first, let's find out if he's a real person or if he's not. And then let's find out if we can communicate with this person to find out what he wants. Well, you never know. He could have been a real guy, right? So yeah, there's four women want. there. So there's Allie. She's right in there like the thick of things, right? So she wants to go investigate. Uh, anyway, so off we went. And we got about, I think we went about halfway up the driveway. And I said to Allie, and we both agreed. I said, he's gone in through, through the trees here. So Allison starts walking in towards the trees. Before you know it, she, something pushed her. And she's like this, <laughs> going backwards. She me fell on her rear end. She goes, that guy just shoved me. Which they can do if they have the energy to push it towards you. That's what they do. Anyway, we tried to get a hold of them again, and we lost them, so we thought, forget it. If he comes back, we'll try again. 
So we started coming down the driveway, and Carol and Marianne, because they were still sitting, you know, here was Carol, here was Marianne, they were facing the cottage, and I have a large picture window, and they were looking in the cottage. We had a bottle of wine sitting on top of the um, fridge. Actually, I was so mad. You know why? Because it was Alma's strawberry wine, oh. which was my favorite. <laughs> my favorite. I'm not much of a drinker at all, but I drank a whole bottle of her wine by myself one time. And that's a rarity. <laughs> I don't drink a whole bottle of wine in a year, but I drank her whole bottle. It was so bad. Anyway, so Carol and Marianne actually watched this bottle of wine, which was at the back of the fridge, right? And it came across like this. Like it didn't roll, it didn't roll off to the side. It was lifted, came across the top of the fridge, and then let go, <gasps> smashed on the floor, and there went my bottle of wine. So anyway, um, so when Allie and I were looking for this guy in the bush, he'd already gone into the cottage and grabbed my bottle of wine. <laughs> so she got shoved, and I was ripped off the bottle of wine. <laughs> um, anyway, we went back outside, and we actually saw him crossing over to the, to the other to the other side of the driveway. We did get him. We did talk to him. We had a conversation with him. But at the end of the day, we sent him off to the light, so it was a good thing. But. Um, you know, so many people have so many stories about that type of thing, all right? And he was one of those instances where he hadn't realized that he'd actually passed away. So we had to convince him of the fact that that's what happened to him. You're going to have to time me. No, not yet. But you're going to have to time me. Okay. You're good in a couple minutes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, another reason why people are very fearful is, um, and I'll have to say that, even in some instances, in some of the houses that we've gone into, um, the energy that comes across is, can be actually quite frightening. And they can actually um, change their appearance to you so that they try to, to scare you. But behind every single one of these scary type of whatever they choose to turn into, when you start taking the layers off, you realize that there's just a very angry spiritual being that's there. And if you can take away those layers and get to the person that's actually there, you can actually have a conversation with them and help them. <clears throat> In the cases where we're dealing with people that we can't help, which is rare, really, because we do our best to try and get through these folks. But on the very rare occasions, and no matter what we do whenever we're working, we always call in Archangel Michael and his band of mercy angels. <clears throat> and that's really for our protection, as well as to try and help, um, you know, with um, with what we're doing, and if there are people there that are that angry that they just can't get beyond that, then we ask for Archangel Michael's help. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are in a place or whatever the case may be, and that you know or have an awareness that there's some activity going on in there, okay, and you're frightened at all, which you needn't be. But if you are, always call in Archangel Michael. Okay, he's the protector. He's the protector. So we ask for him every time we go in and we do it. We say our prayers, we call in Michael, <clears throat> and then we go in and do whatever it is that we need to do. Okay? So that's just an aspect of, you know, one of the things that we talk about in the workshop. We have PowerPoint slides, we have videos. Um, it's quite the presentation, so if you get an opportunity to come to the workshop, then come to the workshop. We bring whatever tools we use. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes we'll just do a regular clearing, and um, typically we'll use white sage. We have feathers, we have bowls that we use, etc. Um, sometimes we'll use drums um, as well, so we bring everything that we typically use just so that you can get a touch and feel for it. And I think I'm just going to leave it at that. If you want to learn more, you'll have to come to the workshop. Ask a question. Yes, Marie. Thanks. Um, Linda, have you ever had it where um, someone's passed, mm -hmm. they have, they're angry, they were very ill, mm -hmm. and they've come back and they put their anger and want to make another person ill? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go to um, just a regular clearing, all right? Um, there's a real estate agent that I deal with when she's selling houses, she, I mean, I've, I've been to a couple of these houses and they're absolutely stunning, they're beautiful. It's a hot market and nobody understands why mm -hmm. the houses aren't selling. I'll tell you why they're not selling. 
There was residual energy in the house because the people that lived in the house were getting a divorce. Okay? So when that residual energy is there, okay, that affects, because the very first thing that, I mean, we're all very sentient beings. When every, you know, people come to me and they say, well, I'm not gifted. You absolutely are. And every single one of us is gifted. And the very first gift that we use every single day is clairsentience, clear feeling. All right? Because you're always, we don't always go on our gut instincts. If we did, then we'd all be better off than we are. <laughs> but we don't listen to ourselves. But when you get a feeling like that, when somebody walks into the house, they can feel the anger, okay? Now, in the situation where someone is grounded, which is what you're talking about, okay? And if they're grounded, um, yes, they can absolutely affect your emotions. And that's the very first thing that they will try to do, okay? So, for example, if, uh, let's just say somebody goes to a pub and they've had a little bit too much to drink, okay? Granted, spirit's going to be all over that pub, mm -hmm. all right? Because they like to be wherever their addiction was. So if they're in the pub and you've had a little too much to drink and, and you've kind of lost um, having control over your whole conscious mind, okay, then they can certainly affect you, for sure. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Okay? If, there's spirit in a, if there's spirit in a home, and let's just say the person was, say, suicidal, for example, okay, then um, their thoughts can affect you on your thoughts and on an emotional level. So let me share this with you. Either for yourself or for someone else, okay, that you know. If you find that either yourself or someone that you know where your emotional patterns are changing to the negative, don't always assume that you're depressed, okay? Or, you know, something has gone in your life to make you upset or whatever. Because in some instances, there's absolutely nothing going on in your life to make you feel that you, the, the way that you feel. It could be the influence of um, a spirit that's affecting you, okay? So think about that. Don't rule it out necessarily. All right, but if you find that all of a sudden, you know, you're very weepy, you're very emotional, you're angry, any of, the, any of the really strong emotions, don't necessarily assume that they belong to you. That's the first question you need to ask yourself whenever you're in a situation where you have some overwhelming emotions. You need to ask yourself, does this emotion belong to me? And you take a look at what's going on in your life and you go, no, there's no reason for this. All right? So then you need to ask yourself the question, well, if it doesn't belong to me, then where is it coming from? Any other questions I can answer for you right now? No?